If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with three quick spoilers for you from Eldritch Moon. The first one, really quickly, is Liliana the Last Hope. I'm glad that we're getting another Liliana, another three drop, and one that can be better than Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Not saying that she is, of course, but potentially could be. Not strictly worse, perhaps, is another way of putting it. Uh, this one I like for a number of reasons. It staves off your opponent's creatures in a different way than fails. Instead of having to minus to do it, you plus, you get to target, but it's less likely to actually end up taking the creature out, whereas, obviously, if you edict them, and that's the only creature, it's gone. Uh, but either one could be uh, a little detrimental. Now, the fact that we're switching around the uh, graveyard effect, let's say, in Vale's case, it's the plus one, each player discards a card. That's fine. In the case of this Liliana, the minus is, or the middle ability, is mill two, then add a creature back. If you're a control deck that still has some creatures in it, that's more powerful. That's something that you want. Liliana the Veil vale is better, but she fits more into aggro and mid-range decks, uh, especially ones that are abusing the graveyard, like for, say, Tassiger, Tarmogoyf, Lingering Souls, Gurmog Angler, cards like those in Modern, where you're actually getting some value out of putting something into your graveyard. But if you're not doing that, if you're a control deck and you want to maintain card advantage, well then Liliana the Veil's Plus actually can be detrimental to you. You use a minus one to play Lily, and then every time you use her plus, it maintains that minus one. They lose a card, but so do you. You want to try to break that symmetry. Well, in this one's case, you don't have that issue. You fill up your graveyard, which in standard doesn't matter as much now that delve isn't really a thing. It isn't a thing. Not, it isn't really. It isn't a thing. Um, but there are still some ways that you can abuse cards being in your graveyard. Now, importantly, this is not discard, so it won't trigger madness, uh, but you can get a creature back over and over again, and even if for nothing else, that allows you to overtax your opponent's removal. You have this creature that keeps coming back turn after turn because you keep bringing it back, and they need to keep finding their removal spells for it over and over and over again, or find a uh, deck in stone. That would do it, in today's standard, or Path to Exile in Modern. Uh, and I also like that her ult... Uh, for a 3-drop, that's about as strong of a win condition as you expect to get. It's a 3-drop Planeswalker with an ult that doesn't read, you win the game right now, but reads, you will very shortly win the game. I rather like that. Uh, and even if you're out of... this isn't double the number of zombies that you have, it's X plus 2, so even if they wrath you or languish you or whatever, you'll still have some zombies coming out. Now, this being the case, because personally I run an Esper Super Friends deck in Standard that doesn't have any creatures in it, and the reason it doesn't have creatures is because it runs Narset Transcendent as a 4 of, who has better than a coin toss to add another card to hand each time with her plus. But if I'm going to run the last hope, I may want to add some creatures in, if for no other reason than now I can overtax opponent's removal. Otherwise, I just have a three drop with two abilities, and starting out with only one. And that isn't as good, obviously, so if I work this deck, if I tweak this deck, I may have to take out Narsets, or find another way around it. But the next one, this oath, this lily is going straight into the deck. Regardless, this is our Oath of Liliana. Finally, the cycle is complete. You were wondering where she was, why she wasn't in there beforehand, if they were possibly going to not give us an Oath for Liliana. No, she's here. She's just late to the party, showing up on her own time, fashionably late. Uh, this one is great for a number of reasons. Uh, the first ability, the first trigger, doesn't really matter in Standard, there's Orbs of Warding, that's really the only Hexproof that we see in Standard right now. 
But, assuming that the opponent does have an Orbs of Warding out... Is that what it's called? Orbs of Warding? I think that's it. And Witchbane Orb is the one from original Innistrad, right? Oh god, I hope I'm right. Anyway, uh, her first ability will still, because it doesn't target a given player, cause them to sacrifice. Now, that's good for EDH, but where that shines... I, first to me, where that shines, is if you were to try to play a control deck in modern, this gets past Leyline of Sanctity. And that doesn't matter most of the time, that matters for one match in particular. And it's the same ma match where you bring in Liliana of the Veil and have her work her wonders. And that is Bogles. Anytime that you play against a Bogles player and you have Liliana of the Veil in your deck, they're going to go to sideboard and bring in all of their ley lines. And when they do, you may just be out of luck. Your Liliana of the Veil doesn't do anything with her edict anymore. If anything, you can just plus to slow them down, but that might not be enough. But with this, you have an, a, a way to make them sacrifice the Bogle regardless. Now that's one particular match. I play Rakdos Control in Modern now, so I may put it in as a one of for that match, and also because I don't have any Lilianas of the Veil anyway. But beyond that, <laughs> uh, her next ability, just whenever at the end, at the beginning of your end step, I'm trying to do this from memory, if a Planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control, put out a zombie. Let me make sure. Put a 2-2 zombie onto the battlefield. And it is not tapped. That is a thing that sometimes you have to deal with with zombies that come in tapped. No, this one will actually be able to protect your Planeswalkers. And you, of course. It's set up on defense. That's sometimes all you need in, in a really dedicated control deck. All you need is just a wall. That's why Oath of Gideon is so good. That's why Gideon ally of Zendikar, uh, just throwing out a 2-2 immediately. That's why he sees play in control decks, even if he's not that great of a control planeswalker. He's for the, the aggro and the mid-range decks, mostly. Anyway, this is just a nice, easy Oath to get out, slows your opponent down, puts up a bit of a wall for you. I'm playing it in mind, certainly. Oh, but I love this one very much. Our third spoiler, the last one, is Deploy the Gatewatch. Six mana. So for the price of Soren Grim Nemesis, you can get Soren Grim Nemesis and company. He can bring a date along with him. Um, you can get out. Obviously, the uh, Orzhov control decks are going to love this even if they don't run too many copies, just because it gives them even more inevitability and can break the mirror. Um, so that's certainly true. Esper Planeswalker decks, there are a lot of Planeswalkers in Standard right now, and there are a lot of good Planeswalkers running around. We still have all of the Origins Walkers, even though for the purpose of this they don't count. We still have Narset, we still have Obnixilis, we have Gideon, we have Chandra, we are getting a Bant Tamio, we have Lily, we have Jace, not counting the creature Jace, um, and now we have, yeah I said Lily, didn't I? We have a lot of good Planeswalkers that are running around, and yeah, you can absolutely make the most out of them. I was hoping that I was going to get a Tamio to put in my deck as well, but I'm actually glad, despite the fact that it ends up hurting me, that we have a Bant Planeswalker at last. And the Collected Company decks are going to get a lot of good use out of her. But this one is just, when you get to the late game, you win the Attrition War. It's not quite that simple, obviously, but this is a huge win-con for control decks that are running a lot of Planeswalkers. If, you're, if the object of the game for you is survive the early turns, wrath the board, or otherwise remove their creatures, and then win through Planeswalkers just outvaluing the opponents, then this is the card for you, especially if you have a lot of diversity in the walkers in your list. So, with that being said, this is what uh, I am most excited for. These three spoilers in particular, um, for standard anyway, are the ones that so far I'm most excited for. And I hope to get this video up to you before too long, before they've been, uh, before they've been around and everyone else has gotten a chance to comment on them. But I look forward to reading your comments. If you have an idea 
for how to abuse these, or if there's another card that you're interested in. What's the colorless... Uh, Nefalia Academy. There we go. Sorry, I had to look at my cheat sheet. Nefalia Academy kind of looks awesome in a format that's going to have so much discard. Whispers of Emrakul is in the format right now. That is going to be a sick land to play, I think. And for what little time the Eldrazi are going to be running around messing up in the format for everyone else, this is going to be something that you can be sure that they'll have. Um, I don't know why. I, main board certainly, sideboard maybe, because of all of these black decks that are running around tearing their hands apart. Alright, I'll see you later. Take care, bye bye.